we are here to bring you everything and anything surrounding Porsche. I'm Mike. I'm Aaron. And this is P Car Talk. All right. Hey, welcome to another episode of P Car Talk. I'm Mike. And I'm Aaron. And we have special guest Jason Bell on the show. How are you doing? Thanks for coming. Um, we are at Reeves Special Location. They are sponsoring this episode and letting us basically be in their showroom to have Jason yeah. here, you know, to, before he kicks off some uh, 11 race gauntlet before he gets <laughs> a smackdown thrown on him. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Jason and his racing career and how he got into racing and basically just go over, you know, some of the dynamics and some of his experiences. And then we'll get to some of these questions also from some of the listeners. So let's go ahead and get rolling. Let's do it. Um, Jason. You know, thanks again for coming on the show. I know you're a busy guy, and you know you got a hellacious <laughs> like <laughs> gauntlet of eleven races, like we discussed coming up. Yeah. But um, let's go a little bit of uh, background before we go get into the current stuff. When did you start to get into racing? When did that really kind of like get a hold of you? When did that happen for you? Yeah, um, I think <clears throat> really, I mean, besides just messing around with go karts, you know, along you know early ages, I think seriously getting into it would have been around 2006 okay so probably like four, 14 years ago 15 okay. years ago um i really got into uh go-kart racing okay so and it just hooked me yeah because you know, i had been racing when i was a lot younger but you okay know, the obviously with money yeah you know, go, even go-kart racing is expensive oh yeah, yeah. it's crazy it's expensive. so you know it, there's a lot of people that you know unless you can really get with somebody that takes you under and you start mm -hmm. racing their yeah. stuff you kind of like find other things to do yeah you know so i was racing four wheelers gotcha you know when i was 20 and so uh -huh. i've always raced everything okay so um, basically kind of took a little bit of a break mm -hmm. and then got back into karting yes yeah and i got and then really probably hooked. went like uh, hardcore right. yeah. into it getting the, yeah, the, the hundred thousand dollar cart and all that stuff well, like, yeah well i was I, I think i was spending close to that much yeah you know i know I, it's expensive i yeah. know like we have some friends at cart and it's ridiculous yeah i mean expensive. i had a full-blown race team we yeah were, we going around the, the country basically i was running the scusa series the Ro rotex series grand nationals i mean everywhere yeah. Um, and, uh, so I'd done a lot of go-kart racing and, uh, you know, for about four or five years heavily, like the last couple of years, it was real. I mean, I think we, I did 14, 15 races. So like 15 weekends, uh, we were wow. traveling, I had a full rig. It was traveling with people. I mean, I'd show up, I'd have three or yeah. four cards. We, you know, the, we'd race Las Vegas, Scusa, I raced the summer Nats. Yeah. Um, and it just got to the point, you know, at that point I was like, you know, I had ran into uh, Skip Barber, mm -hmm. and um, I think uh, like my sixth year, and and decided to do the Skip Barber School. Okay. Um, for open wheel, obviously. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I went and did that. Um, probably I actually did the Skip Barber full thing. You know, uh -huh. so I probably did like ten of them. Oh wow! And then I was racing in that, and then next thing you know, um, I'm racing open wheel cars. Okay. Wow. That's uh, bye bye go, nice. yeah, bye, I was going to say, go that's, a, that's a hell of a progression right there. <laughs> yeah, well, supposed to be, it was supposed to be cheaper. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> supposed to be. It's supposed to be. Uh, so it, I got into to the open wheel probably in 2011. Okay. I uh, started doing open wheel cars, and I was racing Formula B. Um, I don't know if you know what that yeah. is. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, they're super fast. Yeah. So I had... I raced into Formula One Thousand, and then I did the, then I did the SCCA, and yeah. I did, you know, I did. Man, all. you started at Formula B. Oh yeah, nice. Right into Formula B. I skipped wow. all the other stuff. I was gonna say, because I, yeah. I, I know all the Formula yeah, levels. I, did, I, did, I didn't do that. I went right to Formula B. <laughs> He's like, ah, it's, <laughs> we're going. Ahead. Yeah, and then I was, uh, and then I started doing Formula B, and I, I actually raced, I actually raced that for man, I think I did three seasons. I did really well in it too. Yeah. Like, it was a. It was a. Did the karting do a good job of prepping you for that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They would actually did a really good job. I, I had site. I had went out and I uh, had a store built, um, um, a store. Yeah. And uh, we actually went out. I actually went out to Oregon to get my first. To, you know, had to build my yeah, first yeah. one. And, you know, it was good, but I had chose the wrong car. Yeah. You know, we didn't. We did research, but not. You know, we didn't really talk yeah. to anybody in the yeah, series. Yeah. This looks good. It's yeah, it looks awesome. It yeah. looks. It looks. Yeah, but so it was not fast enough. And really? it just, yeah, it had some. It had some drawbacks. There were some other cars, the uh, Furmans and all mm -hmm. that, that would that were just faster. And it didn't take me long. I mean, right. Uh, I mean, the first race was actually my thing. My first Formula B race was at Road America, which was pretty crazy because that's it, a yeah, heck of a yeah. track to start on. That big is fast. Yeah. Um, so, you know, actually it took a first year, really got into it. I have, uh, Bobby Wilson was my kind of, he's the guy, the go-kart legend. Uh-huh. He did some, he'd raced, uh, 
he raced in a uh, Indy car, Indy lights. Okay. He, he ran a, he yeah, won yeah. a couple of that. So he kind of become my mentor in nice. go karting. And That's then, cool. so he went to this with me and he had a lot of open wheel experience. So he accelerated my learning. Okay. Um, yeah. Helped you out a lot. And, and yeah. also was my driver coach and worked and worked oh, on yeah. my cars then too. That's awesome. And, uh, so, you know, I actually, so you're getting a ton of knowledge too. Oh yeah. yeah. Too. And, and yeah. I was racing a lot. Yeah. You know? So, I mean like in, in six years I raced seven, I'd raced a lot. I mean, anytime I could race, I was racing. Yeah. And uh, so, so you were, you got, yeah, bit, super you got, I really got, I really got good. I, I really got good when I went out and I found some citations mm -hmm. and I bought two of them. They're, you know, they obviously don't build them more, but Brandon Dixon. Yeah. Yeah. So I bought his okay. old car and I got another one and Bobby built him. And once I got that car, um, you know, it kind of had more of a different, it had more of a go-kart feel too. And, yeah. And that's when it's I started. a little bit more at home. Yeah. Then I started winning. Yeah. And then I was racing and I was off. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I did, uh, I did, I actually didn't, I actually went to, I mean, I raced some other open wheel cars too, even some Atlantics. I did mm -hmm. Formula Atlantic and then I decided, then we went to, uh, I don't know if you knew about, I mean, well, it's a series that started now, now it's, um, now they're calling it, uh, it's the feeder series and uh formula three okay you know, I, so, I know what you're talking about so we, when they started they were formula lights uh -huh. is what it was and yeah. it was a pirelli formula light so it was a legit series uh you know all just like pirelli world challenge they're all wearing the white shirts yeah, yeah, all, yeah. it's it's funded by pirelli so i got into that uh-huh and i still have two cars in my race shop in tampa yeah if anybody wants to buy them there you go um they're 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 actually um, you just be careful because if you get bitten the way jason is, <laughs> right. you're going, well, they're, they're, you're going hardcore are, these, yeah these cars are good they're you know they're 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 formula no i mean like as far as oh, like yeah, the well, racing yeah, you bug. gotta be careful you'll yeah, get it the basic the racing bug <laughs> But uh, so I had I got into that and I raced those for two years, um, and so I guess that would put me around 2000, I say 11, 12, 13, about 2015 mm -hmm. I, up when racing. So I've raced open wheel carts for probably seven years, okay. you know, a lot of racing, and then and then I just you know I got to the point where there was no series mm -hmm. in in that in that kind of unless you're going to go to like. Unless you were going to go to to Indy Lights, and there's no series, and even then they got ten cars. Yeah, you know. So the series I was in, you know, the, the racing that some it had kind of fell off with the open wheels. Yeah, so the support it, was kind of. like, It was yeah. kind of up and down, and the Formula Lights they fell off, so they uh -huh. they, they they only went one and a half years and shut down. Okay. So, um, you know, they're, those are Crawford chassis, which Crawford is a great car builder. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I decided, like, you know, I was I was actually we were we would actually be at some support we would be support races sometimes for. For Pirelli World Challenge. Okay. And I kind of looked at him and I was like, eh, you know, I like this. I like yeah. this thing. You started looking for like maybe an exit strategy because well, you were that, just like, all right, yeah, I well, still want to race. Yeah, I want to race, I but I want to race with a purpose, you know, with, yeah. with you know, people against more cars. Exactly. And against co competition and, and you, know, some, you know, get into something that has structure. Exactly. And so uh, that's when I decided I bought you know i got involved with uh racer's edge mm -hmm. motorsports and then uh, you know they're out of delan and they run actually now in the gt3 series they run uh two of the uh i don't know if uh, you were just speaking about them earlier the um ah oh, jeez anyways yeah. they run two gt3 cars okay uh, they're uh they just come into there this the guys uh so anyways they they were running uh, Sins, which uh -huh. Sin is a Bulgarian yeah, car, I've seen one. and the Sin, and so I, I love that car, and it's a it is it's not really a street car, yeah. So it's <laughs> yeah, kind no, of a it's, it's really it, weird looking, it, it, it's, yeah. It, it's, yeah. it's kind of and underneath it's kind of a it's kind of a tube built car, okay. So it it, it, it handles more like an open wheel car, wow. Right. Okay. So it I, it was I thought it was the right thing for me to get into, and and so I. So I made the jump, got with them, signed a contract, and then and then got my license. Had to do all that stuff, and then uh, the next year in 2016, mm -hmm. uh, um, I was in the Pirelli World Challenge. Wow! And because okay. uh, I watch it on TV yeah, and stuff, yeah. and and then I actually I'm gonna do that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know what? You know what? To be honest with you, I I got in there and was like immediately good yeah you know, and i actually won my first race so you were like spoiled right no, no, away no, yes. yeah and I won, like this I, is easy and i want <laughs> and i want and i won at vir i won at vir that's uh, a tough track to win yeah too. i won there um which you know was great i know that one of the guys that raced the whole time i won in the never amateur there. the amateur series i was sixth overall mm -hmm. but i on the on the on the uh you know basically yeah. the the am, you know, not amateur, but the pro am. Exactly. So I was, yeah, a, pro I was am, an yeah. am of a, a pro am. Yeah. So that you know, obviously, my first, I was still a rookie. Mm -hmm. So you know, 
know, and honestly, to be honest with you, it was so crazy as I couldn't, my, my uh, headset stopped working. I didn't even know I won. And I was just <laughs> driving. Like that I, yeah. just driving it. I was just yeah. driving hard. Driving the wheels you know. off it. <laughs> yeah, and, that's, and that car, you know, I did really well in that car. Um, that team was good. So I raced that car for two years. Um, and then, obviously, I switched to Audi. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I've had a lot of racing. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm in, I switched, I've been racing Porsche for two years. What's the, from, so circling back to open wheel and then getting mm -hmm. into Pirelli world and all that kind of stuff wh from racing both of those cars, obviously the dynamics are totally different. Mm -hmm. Where did you as a driver have to make some big adjustments where you're like, Oh crap, this car can't do this. <laughs> yeah. Is it like center of gravity for you? It, what was it, it? Yeah, It's a lot. It was a lot of things. Um, it was wearing a helmet with a windshield was completely different for me. It was awkward. You know, mm -hmm. it was, it took a while to get used to sitting in a car. Yeah. Uh, even though you sit in a street car and drive every day, it was just awkward to sit in a car and feel like you're racing, but then have your helmet and then have the <laughs> windshield in front of you yeah. and then have the cross beams and not yeah. be able to see. To be in a cockpit. Yeah, I basically. can't see, and, and I can't see the front wheels. And, you know, obviously racing an open wheel car, you know, I really, you know, seeing the wheels. Yeah you know, at the apex and how yeah, they move, it makes a big difference. So it was really strange. Yeah. Um, and I guess the second thing would be uh, not a lot, the, the downforce, you mm -hmm. know, and the, and oh, the grip, yeah, and the grip. Sense. The grip yeah. level was half. Yeah, the way you could take an apex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Half, <laughs> half, half, yeah half. Where half. you can apex in one of and those. And actually, like, actually, Whoo! actually, every time we would go to a racetrack, you know, and the good thing about it is, you know, I've, I had been racing these racetracks that Pirelli races for seven years. I mean, I've been to them five, six times. So, mm -hmm. But the, the biggest thing was when I got there in the car, it um, and my brain was trained for a certain way, and then the car wouldn't do it. Yeah. Right. So I, you're, you know, you're. It was, a, it was a big, big, big. Did you feel thing. like the car was slow? Because like I know oh, yeah. Alonzo makes that <laughs> thing where he's like, when I go to F1 yeah. and then I race MSA, he's like, I feel like I'm like jogging. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like it, the car's it, like, come on, but the car's moving fast, but it's uh, yeah, not fast 100%. like that. I mean, it, it's fast, like you say. But it's, if, you know, in some cases, you know, even with that Formula B, I mean, at, at Daytona, at Daytona, I, I hold the I hold the record still for the top speed in a Formula B. Really? Yeah, that's because awesome. We were at the runoffs uh -huh. when I was there, and I think I we hit 193 miles an hour. I did in a Formula B. <sighs> Holy crap! Down the going down into turn one. Uh, because we stripped everything off. I mean, the wing was this big. I was gonna say, just, the, I was gonna say, was it just like you and tires? And no, no. We, we, well, we cut, we, we cut the, <laughs> we cut the under tray off. Okay. Flush down the sides. We oh, cut the wing. Nice. We lowered the wing down because we, we had a strategy that we had. We, so we less locked, drag. In I there. qualified third overall out of like thirty-five. Mm -hmm. But our strategy was is that if we can get the race going. And get out. I'm slower in the infield, but I can get on yeah. the hot part. They can't the catch me. Yeah. Well, that, well, back, that's, that but, backfired the first lap because a, a Furman <laughs> car caught on fire and I had to slow down oh. and then they didn't throw the yellow flag and I wound up. Oh, no. It was just a, I mean, yeah. I wound up finish. I think I finished. It, it was good in theory, though. Yeah, like, if it yeah. had that not happened, it probably would have been worked out pretty well. Yeah, and, and you know, that was just one of those things. But, what, you know, that's the speed difference. What I'm getting at there was the Daytona is that. I was on there, you know, doing 185 miles an hour going down, and then, then I come back and I'm in the GT4, yeah. not the GT2, and because they have, you know, it's you know I'm doing 35 miles an hour or less, and yeah. it just it, and and it's it's just a lot. Feels different. like you're going it's, to the grocery it's, store. It's a lot different. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's a lot different. So I mean it's still fast. It was still relative, and it only took it took about a year and a half, and then I kind of got my to like I got re brain. reset. So. Yeah. You know, now if I would get in one of those, I'd be like, yeah, you know, yeah. going so far. I'd be probably opposite. Try, you know, over. I'd be, I'd, I'd be underdriving, yeah, and not overdriving, which is what I was doing yeah. in the, in the car. When I sim race, obviously it's not the same, but like I prefer an open wheel car just because of the visibility. Yeah, and then like him and I, sometimes we'll get in a cup car and we'll run on a sim, and I'm like. This is garbage. Well, not I to can't mention see that, anything. Not to mention that, how much how much more taxing it is on your body too is the heat. Oh yeah. You know, it's just so much hotter. You're not because yeah, you're enclosed. Yeah, you're enclosed yes, with yeah. you know. You can have, like for instance, like the cars, like this car, the GT2. It actually has air conditioning, but yeah. after five laps, it doesn't work. Okay. You know, I didn't know that. It's so hot in the car. Oh, you can't, it just it can't keep up. Yeah, huh? no, no. It's it's like rolling. It's like running down 110 so it's degrees. Like and a, your windows down in the air. It's so like, it's basically sweet. just Love good it. for when you leave yeah. the paddock. It's okay. Yeah, when you we pipe it into the helmet, which we do on uh -huh. the top. You know, mm -hmm. this one don't have it put in yet because yeah. that helmet wasn't it wasn't even 
prepped yet. It's yeah. almost there, but I mean, we'll pipe it to the top so you can at least get your head cool. Yeah. Um, and say, that's you're, really, you're not cooking your brain at yeah, least. That, yeah. And I don't care about my, a lot of guys will wear the cool suits, but I can't stand them. Yeah. You know? And after 10 laps, they go hot, mm -hmm. you know, so I do the head and it keep, try to keep my head cool. Cause yeah. that's really what helps you. So you don't get delirious and yeah, drink yeah. and drink, you know, drink the water as I'm going racing. But you know, inside there, it gets so hot. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, I believe hot, it. Like I, believe I think it was 140 degrees. Well, think about that. You take ambient temp, and then you do race car cooking, yeah. and essentially. The yeah, and yeah, it's just hot. And yeah. uh, so that is a no big airflow. Difference. All the windows are yeah. Up. When the open wheel car, you're, I mean, you're, you're just the wind's blowing in, and you're sweating, but it's just cooling yeah. you down. So you're constant. You're not even hot. Yeah. I, I don't think I've ever been hot in an open wheel car except sitting on the grid, just waiting, waiting without. Yeah. An, if I didn't have an umbrella, yeah. I'd yeah. be baking. But yeah. I mean, once you start going, you, you you're know, good. You, you feel yeah. good. So yeah, that's, that's a big. True. That's a big difference too on the on the heat and the way it mount you sweat yeah. like, literally. I mean, I've gotten out of the car where it's Lost like, like 20 pounds of dude, water, yeah, basically. I, yeah, or, or the water. I had one race where the water bottle quit working. Oh, and, and, and I think that was at uh, that was at uh, Coda oh, uh, two years ago. And the water bottle didn't work. And it was like 110 degrees out. Yeah, yeah. Like, and sun, the, the sun was like, it was no clouds in the sky. Are you the guy that's like on the mic? You're like... Damn water bottle's not working anymore, yeah, son that of a me. bitch. That would be me. Yeah, I'm definitely boisterous on nice. there. Matter of fact, sometimes they come in. That's good though. At least you're up, like, you know, you're yeah, got, but, you and got by your, the, by you're the time you're telling your crew yeah, what's going on. At, at about least. the 59 minute mark, I'm like, I'm seeing things. You know, yeah. it's like it. So it's I used that to intense, not like, right. Yeah. And in an open wheel car, that there's a difference too. Is that the races were a lot shorter. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so like Formula V and then all these other open wheel races, they'll go. You know, they'll go 20 laps. Yeah. 25 laps and if the lap time is one minute and a half minutes you're racing 28 minutes yeah that's yeah. true so these are an hour and five minutes set and then of course the gt3 races are now 90 minutes and mm -hmm. then you know so that's all you know and when it you is. do when you do sprint x when i'm switching out with the driver you know i got 28 minutes yeah race. you know i got to be in the car 28 minutes um and then when i'm in the regular races i'm in there an hour and 10 minutes yeah racing and maybe it maybe it been in the car for an hour and 40 minutes exactly which it's not you know three hours like some of the you know, yeah. NASCAR and all these other guys mm -hmm. do, but we don't have that time to do it. Plus, yeah. we don't refuel. Exactly. Right. So they do in GT. And plus, at least in NASCAR, the windows open, even though they have like a net. Thing yeah, they got a lot. You see yeah, a lot of like, air flowing yeah. through them. Those cars. Yeah, because they have a little bit more pockets where yeah. air does come in. Yeah. Um, yeah I, you know, that's a good point you bring up because I think a lot of people who don't actually experience what you're doing don't think about like all of those little factors mm -hmm. that go into that like the fatigue of it oh yeah sir it's it's and then it's extreme speaking of that so let's roll into those 11 yeah. races where yeah. are you mentally with that with like with the fatigue uh, you're talking about yeah. like and all of that stuff yeah Do you, I, like, I think oh, i'm gonna have to God. change my routine a little bit on those on for those these weekends yeah i have to be a lot more disciplined yeah you know uh, not watching not drinking any alcohol yeah. at all you know sometimes yeah now it goes from kind of like a fun gentleman racer to uh, like yeah. now you've gone into the pro like yeah, all right yeah, I got a yeah. diet like yeah, yeah. you know like the Porsche I, I, well, factory racers yeah, are like don't I, eat unfortunately, that unfortunately unfortunately yeah. I, I, I I got back down about four pounds but with this COVID stuff yeah, but, yeah. I mean I think I I mean I was down I think I gained like nine pounds so. I think everybody did yeah, so. I don't think you're alone in that hopefully yeah. I, I, hopefully I haven't my I have my race became like a Uber eats yeah. platinum member well, like, I haven't tried to put I haven't tried to put my suits on yet so i'm i don't think i, I have if they, i'm gonna have to suck it in on this one if i can't zip them i don't he puts have time. it on he's like who's screwing with me this isn't my suit well luckily i have the backup suits from when i was like 15 pounds or 20 pounds more i have to wear the baggy suit but i think i'll be all right no you know when i i'm i think that the biggest thing is is that um even you know the last the last three years you know obviously you know i changed you know it was i'm racing in the pro level the last three years with mm -hmm. pirelli and so i've definitely was a lot different than when I was racing open wheel, yeah. you know, having a good time. And, yeah. then, you know, now we get out there and, and it's, you have to do that because, you know, there's, you got people are out there and it's serious, you know, yeah. I'm racing yeah. against some really good people, really good race yeah. car drivers, you know, Oshenbach, all these guys. I yeah. mean, we, I'm racing side by side. I mean, that was it's one nuts. of my best things when I smoked him at, <laughs> at uh, Utah, you know, nice. I passed him on his Camaro a couple yeah. of years ago. I was uh, three years ago. I, that was like a great moment for me. Yeah. Personal you know, cause he, win. Cause, you know, cause he, he, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a all full time. That's all he, yeah. that's all he does. Yeah. Right. So he, he, if he's not, uh, if he's not at that track, he's at another track. 
And yeah. so a lot of these guys are. And if he's not the there, he's prepping somewhere else, right? Right, right, right. So that's the thing is like, you know, I'm, I do the same as them, but then I also, I mean, I'm out in a race car every yeah. other weekend. Yeah, and I know true. if I could live on a racetrack, I would be in one every yeah. day. You know, instead, yeah, of golfing, instead of golfing, I'd be <laughs> driving a race car. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, you got to take it serious. Um, you know, I think I'm more of a, I'm more of like of a, rebel type maybe sometimes yeah. you know um i think yeah. that's cool though i think like you're doing it and like you know there's because there's all levels we'll be, we'll you know be you all at dinner and I'll, I'll smoke down a couple of beers and a couple of guys will yeah. look at me like i just created a party foul. exactly like, you race yeah. tomorrow and they're drinking water exactly and I, no, i'm just like it's just a couple of beers exactly so, but i think they're, they're over there with their iv bags they're yeah, like i think like, all right come I on man we gotta have some fun coming up week though i'm not gonna do i'm gonna really you know, i'm yeah. gonna have to hydrate a lot i've got these uh multiplier hydrating packs yeah. i was gonna say you're gonna be drinking a lot of pedia like, I'm like gonna trying be, to yeah, really I'm bring gonna yourself that. back to life because this will be something i haven't done yet you know i yeah. mean I, last year i did race a lot mm -hmm. i got finished like ninth in the porsche porsche cup last yeah, year which and, is awesome and, and and that's just from racing and then this year if we can get all these races in i'm gonna have about 70 races which is a lot which is a ton. right so i'm hoping that they don't you know i can just get that done because and then i gotta finish good too you know and then we actually yeah. started out great because we had I had four top fives, so at Coda, which is awesome. Coda, me and my teammate, we finished fourth and fifth, and then on myself, I finished fourth and fifth. Okay. Um, so I've got, you know, we're in the top five in points on both things, and then a GT2. This will be the first race for that, mm -hmm. and the, and you know, obviously, I think I should have a really good shot to win yeah. these GT2 races by the, you know, I know the people I'm racing with, yeah. so you know, I'm hoping that's the case. But you know, like you said, it's a, it's a, I don't know how I'm gonna feel. Yeah. I mean, I, just at first to I just said it's not it. a big deal, and then I start looking at the <laughs> timelines, and I'm looking at it. I'm like, "You're like that doesn't like." Well, I get out of one race, and then I got like 16 minutes to get in the car to start the other yeah. race, and I'm thinking, "Hmm, it's actually <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like it's like take the Gatorade shower on the way to the next race." And, like, and, <laughs> and, and you know, VIR it gets super hot. Oh yeah. Super yeah, well, there's there. like there isn't a lot of airflow there. No, it's super hot there, and it's a, and it's know, June now. Like yeah. it's and, end and, of know, June. The good thing is it's not a super uh, over exhilarating track physically but it mentally it is yeah. because you know mentally going up the s's and exactly. taking the left hander <laughs> down before the tree turn i mean you got to be sharp mentally for that or you make one little mistake there and then you know it's over it's yeah over. you're off yeah. you're off so i think it's going to be exciting um do you think it's going to be tough to go back and forth between the the gt4 club sport and this no like, in that same weekend no i don't i don't think so because okay. and I, that's why i was talking to you guys earlier before we come on the show here that you know the the difference between the GT3 and the GT2 is that the down there's not as much downforce. So basically, this is like a GT4 on steroids. Okay. So they they actually handle the same. Okay. So so in essence, what I'm saying is it's almost like this can it's really close to going through the corners at the speed that the GT4 can. Okay. Um, so the, this the, just has way more firepower. Yes, I think that I think if I was doing a GT3 yeah. to the GT4, which I have done uh -huh. three, four years ago, I, I, when I was racing the R8 Audi, yeah. I actually raced a GT3 Audi. Okay, the same weekend, okay. at, and I think we were in Utah, and that was that that messed me all up. Yeah. It was a it was a complete debacle. Yeah, I was gonna yeah, say yeah, probably yeah. by the it took you the whole race to get yeah, used to the car. Well, yeah, probably. because you're you're you know in the one car you're you're flying off the track and the other car you're getting past because yeah. you're not going fast <laughs> enough. But, so in this is the, the differences in what I found because I've driven this a lot. I've I've actually drove this at uh, out in California at Thermal. Okay. Which yeah, is yeah, Thermal Club's place. awesome. I and mean, if I if I could move out there, I'd buy a house yeah. on the track and. I would just That's my, cool my days would be driving out on there, letting yeah. them air some tires up. I drive on the track. But that, isn't that such a cool idea too? Oh, just man. to talk, like I just, instead know, of living on the golf course, you I live at the track, it. I and it's like about doing. I thought about man. I wonder if we could do that here. You know, just build yeah. some nice because that, you know I I actually was gonna. I mean, if I, I luckily I got out of there because I almost bought a house. <laughs> uh, you're the, just one, like I'm doing but, it. <laughs> but you're gonna ha you're gonna have to find the right person to to wake up next to you and you look out the window and there's the apex of turn yeah, five you're you know, right and that's exactly what it was i mean the window you look out your window and there's the you torque. that's glory oh, for you it. yeah and and my and my team so i race with gmg mm -hmm. and what's unfortunate is like he's texting me sending me pictures and james sofronis which is a great race car driver and he owns the team and he's on the track, you know, like every other week. And I'm like, man, you're pissing me off. <laughs> you know, he's like, well, come out here. Well, I was just about to say, he yeah, probably isn't yeah. any help because he's like, like bro, bro, just move out here. That's what he says. Yeah. And, and, I, like, and uh, I like it out there. But, I want to. Right. So I, I actually, in this, during these times, I actually raced this car a couple uh -huh. of uh, times. And I actually went out there and tested. Like, nice. 
three and a half weeks ago. So That's awesome. There. And then la and then right before this happened or during the initial phases of it, I was racing a series out there mm -hmm. and I got to race the GT two yeah. and the GT four. And you know, so and the same at the same weekend. So yeah. I, I know the difference really is straight line speed mm -hmm. and just a little bit in the corner but not enough to really throw you off the, okay the braking points and different things you know it's not like you're driving a, thou a way deeper with this because yeah. the brakes aren't that great and you're going really fast yeah i remember you saying that you so, can't you can't really freight train I think, it in. i think yeah and, and and i think this is going to be i think it's going to be doable so you know i'll know i'll know in a little while if how, how good <laughs> yeah you'll find <laughs> out real how, soon how right different it, it really is <laughs> yeah. you'll find out real soon <laughs> No, I mean we love those guys at GMG. How about that 935 they have? You know, yeah, that well that's sense. James. James. Yeah. James is that's his actually his. He bought that. Yeah, that 935. Yeah. Well, it's they, cool because they offered you know. they offered me to buy one too, Porsche. Yeah, nice. But, but I I didn't. I'm like no. Yeah. I got I got two GT4s, a G, two GT2s. And, yeah. You know, I and and the and that that 935 is nice. And I looked. I mean, I've sat and I drove it. Yeah. Um, it's just it to me it, it's it, the only difference I think between the GT2 and that is the bodywork. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, exactly. And, but it, it it's a unique looking vehicle. Yeah. Right. But it's yeah. nice. I mean. Exactly. It's one of those things. It's kind of like it's cool, but yeah, you got this, and it's kind of like, I don't need both of them. Like. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we did an unveiling of his at uh, his. He has. Yeah, a, I saw a, that. He has the house on the yeah. racetrack. Uh, obviously, that thing looks so cool in full carbon, though, man. Yeah, it does, and he's leaving his full carbon. He's yeah. not going to wrap good. it. That's, good. That's awesome. Like that. yeah. I think it looks. It good looks like tough that. like that, doesn't yeah. it? Like, yeah. yeah. So he and, and I don't know. I haven't. I don't think he's even taken it out on the track. I don't think. Okay. I don't think he has. I don't think he wants to track I mean, it. No. You know, people find out and the value of it. I mean, if well, that's the crazy thing. We actually talked about that on one of the podcasts. There's some guy that lives in Monaco that bought one, put zero miles on it. You know, I think they were like what they're like eight fifty or yeah. something like that, uh -huh. and then he he sold it for one six, uh, right. twelve months later, literally. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, that that is a great investment. Like yeah. you doubled your money in twelve they had, months. They had a problem because they had people that were selling them before they even had them. Really? So like they were, they were just like, listing them and then trying. Yeah, to they sell got it. the allocation and they were yeah. like, all right. They, no, they were trying to just sell the allocation. Oh wow! Yeah, without even buying the car, which is like, I mean, that's come on. Yeah, yeah you're not, right. not going to get that call a second no, time. No. And, and the, so, yeah, so Porsche, you know, they the Porsche Motorsports didn't didn't yeah. didn't like that. I, you know, I just bet. same thing with the GT2. These cars, you know, they offer. Yeah. There are 200 of them were made. Exactly. Um, and and a, and a, a lot of them got uh, allocated to some people that are never going to race them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they're going to sit in their That's collection. That's kind of a shame, yep. right? Yeah. And if you're going to have a, a new series, you can't, you got to sell it to people that are going to race them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. People aren't That's racing Exactly. Series, so you yeah, bought a race car and you're not going to participate the in the series? The good thing is, is out, like I said, out in Thermal, there's, there's five of them you okay. know, out there and I've raced against them already. That's awesome. Um, I was going to ask how big the series is. I think I think at VIR there's going to be 12, 12 of them, and then they're going to. But the, in this series, they're going to put in older GT3 okay. cars. So okay. like it's a little uh, mixture. Yeah. So there's going to be some older GT3s. Just to spice it up, some older yeah. Cup cars and yeah. stuff like that. Uh, I don't know if they're going to be Cup cars. It, 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 I can't remember what they call them. They got they have certain generation. Okay. So I, it must be a car that is comparable to this. Okay. You know, maybe back when before they had the. You know the GT3s gotcha. now. I mean, they're they're stuck to the racetrack. Yeah, you know, yeah. they're just they're got tunnels. Oh, yeah. They've got you know. It's I mean, that, you drive that car if you don't if you don't drive a GT3 flat, you're not gonna you're gonna crash. You exactly. Gotta, you got to go because it won't right? stay on track. Yeah, right. You got to stay on it. You know, almost like a formula car, or open wheel car. If you don't if you don't push it, yeah. the car's gonna slide around. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You got and so I mean I think that they're, they're finding some cars that will be comparable, and then they're going to. You know, BPM, BOPM back oh, okay. down yeah. match. And, that that and, uh, makes sense. That would make sense. And so that that way they have more cars in there. Yeah. So it's a little bit. <laughs> that's, good. that's good for you guys. You know, GT3 a couple, you know, two years ago they only had like eight, nine cars. Now mm -hmm. they're up now. Their numbers are up. They got like 22 cars, which is great. Yeah. Because you want to at least put a good field out there. Oh you know? yeah. I yeah, mean, I mean at, the, at the end of the day, why I love GT4. because then if you don't like. <laughs> Who's gonna watch that's the why, damn race? That's, that's like. why. That's why I love GT4. I mean, we had 40 cars. Oh my god, that's awesome! I mean, you got 40 cars on the on the grid. You that's know? a lot of traffic, uh, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah. you got to qualify up front. You yeah, know? I mean, yeah and we actually the got the pole at Coda. So uh -huh. uh, we got the we started like first, fourth, seventh, and eighth. But we got the pole for Coda for our the last race. That's awesome. Um, nice. Well, my teammate got the pole on that one. Yeah, I'm still a winner. Hey, it's yeah, a team. Still it's a team. We, it doesn't I matter. Still, I, I mean, I, I was still got fifth on yeah. my in my qualifying, but he got he got the pole. So. Yeah, that's awesome. But he's super fast. 
super fast. Let's talk a little bit about, we, we've discussed it very lightly in previous podcasts, but since you've actually experienced it, how does it work when you are told you have an allocation for this? Do they get an email and they say, hey, Jason, you've well, been selected? Like, yeah. how does that work? Can so, you walk us through yeah, that a little so, bit? So basically, obviously I was racing the GT4s and I had two of those. Uh -huh. um, and I think, you know, for, for the race side of it, the race car side of it, it, they were kind of looking at the teams okay and so obviously i was racing with uh gmg too plus i had already bought two of the gt4 porsches yeah mm -hmm. um actually uh yeah two yeah so uh so and he had bought you know he james had a gt3 um and you know which are 750 and then yeah so they kind of came to him they came to me and i think that it i think really in a, in, a, in a nutshell I don't know if they literally looked at my personal car stuff that I bought, which, yeah. I, you know, obviously I got this allocation. I was going to say, yeah, you The got GT2 it. that I got allocated here was because they offered it to me here. Yeah, okay. You know, obviously because I yeah. bought a lot of cars. Exactly. Too many cars, probably. That's why I got offered <laughs> Exactly. That. And, uh, They're and like, so this I, guy will buy it. <laughs> so I think, in the, I think over in the, uh, on the racing side, it was more of who's going to race it and mm -hmm. w what team are they racing with. So I think it was a uh, – I don't think it was just because – of me, I think it was a collection they're, of. They're uh, looking to have a race series. Who, are, who I'm yeah. racing. This guy's going to use it. Right. Yeah. Right. And 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 all these, I'm racing with a team that's going to buy one too. Because James. Because yeah. so they offered me. They went to James. They went to me. They said, "Listen, um, we are starting the GT2 series. We want to kick it off at Spa in Belgium. Uh huh. Um, we're offering this to you know ten people. Yeah. In the in the United States. Do you are you you know are you interested? Are you going to buy the car? Uh, but Porsche was covering a lot of it, uh -huh. and also Porsche was going to fly it back on an airplane, which is awesome. And yeah, and which uh, and also you can go there. They've already got the hotels booked out. They've got That's this, awesome. and and uh, so it was almost a layup for you at that. Yeah, point, dude. Right? I was like, yeah. I, you're I, like, it, how can I say no it, to this? Yeah, I didn't say. I wasn't going to say no. Yeah. Right. So because I had been racing for a while, and I'm thinking, you know, I've been watching those spa races for years, and then and then now to go over there as the two American drivers. Yeah. Because we were the only two American drivers over there. That's awesome. So of course I said yes, and uh, so he, so we got that, and uh, and then it was set, and it was pretty quick too. It, it all happened pretty fast, yeah. and then uh, but that was an amazing experience. I was gonna say, talk about that spa day yeah. a little bit. Oh, like, man. what was that like? It's crazy. Yeah. It is, the they roll the red carpet out for you. Are you yeah, there? well, you know, Porsche put a lot of money in it. Porsche yeah. Motorsports put a lot of money in this event. You know, it, obviously, we were the support race for the 24-hour race. Mm -hmm. So the, there was thousands That's and awesome, thousands man. of fans. <laughs> That's yeah, really yeah. cool. That must yeah. have felt awesome. Oh yeah, I've got I've got pictures and videos where, whenever we come to the grid to go on the racetrack, it's like it's almost like. Uh, I don't know, like if you're running out on the football field and everybody's clapping. Yeah. I mean, it's just yeah, you can it's just, just like, a mob of fans yeah. all the way down. You can just, and you got to like, drive the like, car. <sighs> you got to drive the car through them, and they all love it. And you yeah. get out and wait, and they're all patting you. They want to take yeah. pictures, and uh, they're real running. rock star yeah. stuff, right? Right, yeah. Well, they got that. And in Belgium over there, on, uh, in Spa, this track, they have like a bunch of different bars in the middle of the track, uh -huh. like down in the infield. So oh, that's cool. You're driving through, and there's just like. <laughs> Some you know people are playing beer pong over here. That's awesome. And they're just going nuts, and you hear the car driving. Yeah, race is happening. Yeah, so we we, we actually had I mean like our our garages and um and our banners and the way it was set up was amazing. Yeah, I mean the, the shirts and it just it was just great. Yeah. I mean obviously it was a great experience. I we raced with a German team, uh, so he was you know we raced mm -hmm. with a team out of Germany, uh, which was really unique because you know I had a driver coach and my. Uh, crew chief was German from Germany and uh, so we got out there and like I was it was you know, like the first practice I was I was like man because you know I hadn't driven the GT2 yet on the racetrack yeah. and you know I knew it was going to be fast it was no you know it was where I'm used to driving where the car has some uh, BOP so it's you know you can only yeah. you're always going to be flat and this thing was just wide open right so I got, this is I got, I get it's just out. eating yeah. the whole time yeah. 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 exactly so and then I came in and surprisingly, I was like sixth fastest out of like 17. So I was like, huh, good. You're like, not all bad, right. Not bad. And so, uh, so if from I there. I knew I was badass. Yeah. So <laughs> that was I mean, you're worried about America. a lot. You're worried about a lot of stuff, what right? What do you think, baby? <laughs> Red, well, white, blue, son. Yeah. Well, well, we had the American flags on there, so that was good. And we had the big ones up. Our names were up there. Our picture. That's awesome. It, I mean, outside. It, it was, man, it was it was amazing. The, the autograph session was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. We, we It was 
I bet you three or four thousand. Holy crap! It was nuts. It was not. It was just unbelievable. It sounds like a racer's dream. Like it, it this is. whole like it, event. It, it was. For you. It was. It was. It really was because I've never been in a country over there like that. And mm-hmm. I'm taking delivery of the GT2 race car. Plus, I'm racing in the race. Yeah. You know, and I'm racing on the race right before the 24 hour race yeah. starts. So yeah. everybody's, everybody's there. Yeah, everybody's, everybody's there. Everybody's already so that we had you know. 30 or 40,000 people watching our race. That's nuts. And, uh, you know, they camp out everywhere. And we got... They can't get any closer other than, like, maybe racing the actual 24 race itself, right? Right, right. And we got there, and we we got to finish right before the rain started. Because if you remember the race last year, that race was... I do remember. ...was an unbelievable... They had to... They actually stopped it, remember, until the next morning. I do remember that. Because we actually got to stay. So part of it was we stayed, and we had all access. So we're right down on the Uh 24-hour in the pits. Yeah, that's that's cool. And I actually had a couple of friends that I know that raced that were actually racing the race. So I Uh I was going to go hang out with them. But it was unbelievably flooding. Like Oof. crazy, that's crazy. miserable. But the fans, I'm so telling you. So then you're you, really lucky to have gotten <laughs> got your race in and got well, done. Well, that's what I was going to tell you. During our race, uh, I was doing really well. I think I was. I think we wound up. I think we wound up having 23 cars on the grid, and like I said, there was like five 918s, mm-hmm. and um, I think I was up to like eighth or something. I was running really well, and it started raining at the end of our race. Uh huh. And uh, and I wound up I wound up doing a little tootsie spin. Oh you know? yeah, yeah. It, well, we were on slicks. You know, well, I was so, gonna say. I was gonna say there's no. Well, we're all, they're all, what's happening. It was like two laps to go, and it's like everybody got you know watch it, watch it. You know, it's gonna yeah. get, it's wet on the because it can rain on this track, and on the other side it ain't raining. Yeah, exactly. Region. And, yeah. So I came around going into almost mm-hmm. going into the last turn. Yeah. And I got a little heavy on the brakes, so I lost five spots. But yeah. I mean, whatever. I mean, I, I wasn't. I, the, the biggest thing, like I said, it, it, it was the race. That, that race was so hard because, you know, you, it, that car is new. No, yeah. brand new car. And you've never been at spa. Never been at spa. <laughs> a couple new things yeah. going on. I got one day of practice, Jeez. three sessions. Yeah. German, uh, German guys probably three, telling yeah, you you're not going flat three, out. Yeah, yeah three sessions at <laughs> yeah. 35 minutes. You're not going fast enough. Oh, that's right. oh, that, No, they were, they were, they were, the, the guy was, they were hardcore yeah. right? because. You, you must go faster. You gotta get you gotta get La Rouge down. Yeah. You know, right? Because if you if you go through there, if you don't go through there, it creates you can really crash. Because you're gonna upset the car. You on can, the top, you can yeah, crash bad in there. Like yeah. it's dangerous. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it took me like seven laps, mm-hmm. and he'd be like, ah, you know, because they had the telemetry Screaming in there. Yeah, yeah. So finally, I just like just let it mat. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and once I did it the one time, because it's flat. Yeah. You're flat yeah. through there. That's, I mean, you're doing 160 miles an hour through there, and it's like a compression. Your your but stomach, puck, your stomach, yeah, moment. You know, you're just your like stat, your stomach right. hits your chin, and then you're coming over the top, and then you're like, and you get light, and you're doing this yeah. every time, and you catch it, and you're, you're like, like, this is gonna be badass. So this is gonna be real bad. This is gonna be a Ricky Bobby moment. I'm flying through the air. I'm on fire. <laughs> well, you know what? If you look at it, you actually got air. We actually got air. Really? Yeah. So once I got it one time, then I can the do it. Right? Yeah. There. Because, yeah. But it's You're one like, of okay. The, the car can handle it. It's one it. of those okay. things like the kink at Road America. Yeah. Where it's just and, I, and even going there still, it's still sketchy. Yeah. Right. And and it's just like, is there oil there? Is it a little bit damp? Is yeah. it? Is it? You know? Because that's just so. It's just there's no room for error. And the well, same being thing a logical I, human being, you're always gonna have that factor. You should have it because that's what even, probably keeps even, you alive. It's even worse with this race. Is what I'm saying is because I'm in another country. Oh yeah. The car there. You know, there's there's one car. They didn't. You know, there's not like they have parts. Yeah, that's you know, true. They don't have any parts. They already set it up front. We have yeah. no parts here. These yeah. cars, we just got this many cars here. We couldn't get all the parts here. You know, they might have a couple little yeah. tiny parts, but so don't ruin the car during practice. Well, you don't want to be that guy, right? You don't <laughs> yeah. want to be no, the guy no. coming on the damn back exactly. on the flatbed with a car wadded well, plus up. Plus, then you're also like representing the U.S. You're the only. Yeah. American. They're like, yep. I knew it. I knew the yeah, American yeah, driver is going to handle this damn car. Right. So, so that's why <laughs> we, I really, we played it safe. Yeah. Right? Played, but then, you know, as you got to know the track you know and eventually on during the race i kind of you knew the track yeah the the track was the track was a really great flowing track but it took a little bit to get it because there were so many different corners that looked the same and you're like oh wait a minute this is the one that i got to do this or i gotta (laughs) i gotta hit this fake grass strip over here yeah i gotta so so it was just one of those things where once i got it the race was over i'm like you know when you really got it once you got dialed in you're like why can't i stay here and do this again so they're actually talking about doing it this year so yeah James has talked to me about our the, the Porsche flying our our Porsches over there. Yeah, and if they do, I'm, I mean, I'm going to go. You ever thought about just doing it for recreation too, like taking your car over to some tracks over there to like you know take uh, it to the like ring, the racetrack, the yeah, race car, to, yeah, to run yeah. to the ring. Well, I mean, just for like yeah, you, yeah. Well, I've like got, on a closed day. Well, what I was going to say, you know, the German German team that I was racing for, 
uh, he was trying to get me to leave my GT2 there. Mm-hmm. And he said, why don't you race the International Series? Yeah. Because they, they also, this, like just like America, they're also going to have a GT2 okay. uh, Series. But they race all those Norbert. They oh, race the like, Spa. Wow. I mean, their racetracks are obviously. Yeah, of course. Yeah, legendary. You know, and ours are good, too. But, I mean, obviously, that you know. Yeah, but, you know, you it, got the green hell. You got their, Yeah, you know, those are the, the six, seven races. The big that boys. So yeah. I thought about it, but I'm like, man, this. You know, I mean, I have to fly to Europe every, every yeah. and I think it would be great. But then I'm thinking, whew, that's that. Uh, you know, yeah. like we're we're talking about like doubling my budget. I was just about. <laughs> I was going to say the race budget goes yeah. up a lot. Well, well I was point, also going right? to race here too. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. Right, it so wasn't like you were not going to. Oh, yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. It's not like you were not going to race <laughs> right. here. You were just so, going to. Yeah. You were going to add that. Yeah. Then I thought, well, that's kind of selfish. So I mean, yeah. yeah I, I told him like, yeah. I said, I want to come back and race a couple races. Yeah. The good thing is, I don't need to fly my car because he has them. That's yeah. cool. So I can go over there and race, and I have thought about doing a couple yeah. of races over there. Yeah. And I think I'm going to. Yeah. That'll be fun. I'm not sure which one I have to pick, but obviously with the COVID stuff, it's kind yeah. of set everything back. So, yeah. You know, unfortunately. Once everything comes back. Once though, it comes back and everything. I would imagine, you know, a guy at your caliber, like you probably, you know, that's got to be on your list to race some of those tracks. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, there's a couple of races. I've raced the eight hour race. The I've raced the four hour races. We almost won the eight hour race uh, last year or two years ago. Me, Andrew. And James at uh, Laguna Seca, mm-hmm. uh, we eight hour race international G, uh, continental GT race. We okay. were we were leading. We had a, a one and a half lap lead. Nice. And with forty minutes left, the back wheel fell off. Oh. Literally fell off. So That's it just crazy. came off going down, going, coming down the <laughs> yeah. corkscrew. This ain't good. Not a, I wasn't driving. James <laughs> yeah. was driving. I was like half dead. Is, yeah. I, I ran my stint. We I, we were in first. Jan, uh, Andrew yeah. ran his. We were crew chief we comes in. Race to, is over. You're like yeah, what? We were about to pit and let Andrew finish off the last forty minutes, and we were going to take the overall win. Everything. Yeah. And uh, I'm standing there. I remember I was watching the TV at the at the at right in the pits, watching the TV screens on the on our mm-hmm. thing, and. I, and then I see a wheel flying, and I'm like, oh, somebody lost a wheel. And then I see James come down. I'm like, what? <laughs> and it was us. So, yeah. So I've we raced lost the, a wheel. I've, I, I want to race that race again, but I really want it here. I, what I want to do is the 12-hour Sebring race. So yeah. I think that's going to be – because I love Sebring, and we've yeah. raced there. It's such a brutal track. Yeah, I've been yeah. on that track, and oh, yeah. I've raced yeah, that yeah, track. I love it's, it. I love it. It beats the shit out of you. I, I love it because it's so it's so technical, and yeah. it, is, it is very, very physical, brutal, physical. Mm-hmm. We raced uh, the four-hour race But it's there. history, right? Yeah, like, that's we finished second. We finished finished second in uh, IMSA so I raced the IMSA four hour okay. race so me and James yeah did that race and we finished second I mean I've got what me was a, that weather tech challenge yep, or something like yep. that yeah yeah we finished second um I'd like to race that race in the 12 hour race yeah that'd be kind of cool that'd be um, badass to but stand that's up a kind of the one I want to do over here cherry pick a couple of those endurance races and, we and almost like... raced a 24 hour race last year we were about this close to doing it and mm-hmm. then we didn't do it um I mean that I like the 24-hour race, but I like the 12-hour. I think is more logical. Yeah, you know, the 24-hour race budget is way up there. I was gonna say it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's, it's it's out. It's it's really up there. Yeah, you know, so you got to get some other sponsors and people involved. Yeah. And We're good friends with Carlos, and we talked to him about mm-hmm. that stuff, and he's like, "Yeah, dude, he's like, you know how expensive dude, the tire it is budget. Like... The tire budget's one hundred and fifty thousand yeah, dollars. Exactly. I mean, yeah. that's just when for you tires hear that. I mean, that's. I'm glad you said that because yeah. a lot of people who don't frequent the track or not realize it and that's that's not like oh that's for one race right exactly that's that's a commitment that's not like oh well if you don't use it you don't get those tires that's it that's what it costs yeah yeah, right that's the cost you got to do it yeah Yeah. you can't you you can't it's like you can't do that you got to have the tires exactly you're not going to be able to do it it's it's pointless to go out there if you're not going to get the exactly it's not like uh it's not like the scca Mm -hmm. where you can maybe you got guys will take other guys' tires exactly. and then actually go beat them with their exactly. used tires. <laughs> exactly. So you know, but in this in this yeah. series, you gotta you have to have the tires and and even well, on, like in the like because Michelin, I, I didn't realize that they have such a uh, a strain on like basically they control that whole environment. Oh yeah. Like basically, like all right, hey, these are the tires you're gonna get, and then you. All your tires have to be accounted for when they come yep. back. All of that stuff. Oh yeah, well they got they got a barcoded mark. They're oh, yeah. checking them. Yeah, yeah there's no screwing around. No, there's no, just no, like no, no, no. they're don't. all coming back. Yeah. So it's like it's you're rental. essentially <laughs> leasing yeah. tires yeah. for that for that day yeah. from them, yeah. and, and it's not it's not cheap. Yeah, what so, a racket that is, huh? Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, they're made, Pirelli and Michelin, and they're making some good money on the tires. I mean, I, that's a bit, bit, that's why they put so much money into it, and they want it to be there because they're they're actually it's benefiting them too. I mean, of course, they're getting research and stuff like that. They're you know they're doing yeah. More it's like tire technology is coming yeah. straight from there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, that's awesome. So let's roll into some of these questions before okay. we close out here. Um, so we had a couple um, that came up, which were pretty cool, I thought, that you know have you thinking a little bit. First, the question is, uh, why do you race with the number two? Oh, man, why do I race with the number two? Yeah, that is kind of unique. It, you know, it's uh, I, the story behind that is actually when I was racing go-karts and when I got into open wheel, I used to race with a number 54. Mm -hmm. So, and the only reason I did 54 is because in high school and, and little league, I was that was my football number. Okay. <laughs> so I had, I've sense. had 54 for a long time. Uh huh. And so one day I was looking at some pictures of my race car on a track and, and then I would just see other cars and I see mine with 54. I'm like, that's not a race car number. Yeah. And I don't like 54 right, anymore. I don't <laughs> yeah, like that's it That's too much. <laughs> yeah. I don't like it anymore. Right. So then I'm, I'm looking, I'm thinking to myself and then I, I wanted number one. Mm-hmm. But that's not a good number to have as no. a race car, right? Number one. It's so, kind of like a jinx. So I thought, yes. well, maybe number two. Yeah. And it really, honestly, that is exactly where the okay. number two came <laughs> there from. <we> <laughs> there you go. I mean, it was, I, I wanted yeah. a single digit number because trying, even on the, yeah, and I started using it on my open wheel cars because the problem is on the back, on the back uh, wing, on the wing plane, on the uh -huh. side panels, you know, it's so much easier to get one number and then trying to squeeze yeah. two in. And I, and honestly, that's, that's where go. it came from. It's not any harder than that. Chris Bianco, you got your answer, and <laughs> that's the reason. So next question, you have a Street 2 RS, uh -huh. you have a Club Sport. W what are some of the similarities that you, obviously it's if the race version, but like what are some main differences, I guess, they're asking between the cars that okay. you can tell? Yeah, is it for weight? Sure. Is it? Yeah, for sure. So the GT2 race car is definitely lighter. Mm -hmm. um, and so you obviously, in the race car, you, you it's it's raw, you know, so you get a more feeling. It's definitely a lot more nimble mm -hmm. uh, than the street car. The street car is still you know, really good. But, you know, obviously these comparisons I'm going to give are as close as I can give because I can't drive the street car <laughs> on the road like yeah, I drive this that's true. on a racetrack. Yeah, 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 we'll, yeah, we'll disclaimer that. The, biggest, yeah, the yeah. biggest difference is when you get in the race car on the track, it, there's no in-between throttle. I mean, it's either you're either flat on the throttle or you're off. Okay. Right. On so off it's on, off, on. There's no. Because we've like, driven the street version. We've driven the 2RS on the street. We obviously never driven the club sport. So, yeah, yeah that's very progressive. Like, it's very Friend, user friendly. Yeah, this this here. So the the, the main the, another big difference in this race car is the braking. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this, this isn't factory brakes. You know, this yeah. isn't the brakes that are on the actual uh, yeah. street car. The brakes on this are better. Yeah. Uh, so you're gonna it's gonna take more a continuous stopping. It actually stops better than the street car. Yeah. Um, and another thing I guess would be you know just maybe it might just be the way they've set the computers up because. The timing and, and and the computer program in the in this GT2 yeah. is completely different than that. Okay. So this car is definitely faster than yeah. that. The this one's car. definitely probably juiced up. It yeah. is. It is. It's the same motor. Yeah. Right. So there's not there's no motor work done. Yeah. Just different tune. That's different tune. Uh, there's different. I think it's got a different uh, exhaust. Okay. Um, and it's and but I think the everything else the turbo I think I think all that stuff's the same. Mm -hmm. But the the brakes they're different. The shocks are different. Yeah. These are completely different shocks. They're the shocks that are on the uh, street car or the factory street yeah, car yeah, yeah. shocks, these are actually tunable shocks, three okay. positions. So these shocks are way different. Yeah, yeah. So the handling and and I think the handling and just the the, the nimbleness, okay. the lightness of nice. the car. So if I had them both on the racetrack, this one would definitely kick its butt. Yeah. But yeah. I'm definitely not taking my GT2 street car on a racetrack. No. Yeah. I know what's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to. I just don't want to do that. Nope. This uh, Bill Cassidy wrote says discuss one key milestone in the beginning of your racing career that took you quickly to the next level. Okay, I got it. Yeah, that's a good one. I mean, I think I'm gonna I go back to uh, when I had a crash at uh, Watkins Glen and what I was telling you mm -hmm. earlier in an open wheel car. <laughs> and you know, I actually, you know, I was really uh, coming on. I was actually coming in to get better, better. I was starting to finish better. And, um, you know, obviously it's, you know, just uh, paying attention type thing, really yeah, focusing. Yeah. And, and at that point, I, I don't think I really was doing it as much, but I, you know, I basically had uh, the, the not enough discipline. Okay. So, you know, I came into the turn one. Um, I think I was, uh, I think I was third, you know, at the unqualifying, yeah. at a, you know, and, and I was thinking I was just going to go get the You're next. Just going to go uh, dominate. Go, yeah. yeah. And, and. and I wound up making a mistake in there and uh, stay coming off the throttle 
getting up high sided on those NASCAR curves. And then I wound up shooting straight down onto the Armco barrier yeah. uh, at like 120 miles an hour. Oh. And, and I just, uh, the only thing I remember is like coming back open, I'm looking around and it's like a tire is sitting on my, right here, like, I, like it's an earphone. And I'm like, why is my tire here? You know, it's like, <laughs> so I like completely destroyed the car. Oh, wow. So, you know, obviously I think at that point, um, before that, you know, I, I really was, you know, I wasn't taking it as serious as, you know, I, I thought, right? It's just, just having fun, yeah, yeah. racing, yeah. And yeah. then after that, yeah. you know, I, and, and it really woke me up that, you know, you know, this, I need to get more involved and really paying attention to focusing and studying the track and doing things off the track. Putting in know, some homework. Yeah. 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 And that was, like I said, that was real early, but that woke me up because, I mean, obviously I've had crashes since then, yeah. but, you know, nothing that I, you know, I've made some mistakes, I and mean, everybody's going to make them. Of course, and and really, but I've I've never crashed anyone else, mm -hmm. right? I've been crashed, yeah. yeah. But I but you know that kind of I think that would be the the one of the one of the milestones where after that I really studied, focused, paid attention to you know, there's just little things that you can do that make a big difference. Yeah, all those little sums of those little things add up to like the overall yeah. like mm -hmm. that makes sense. Steve Twelve Productions writes favorite car and f and favorite event uh, to drive at. My favorite car, man, that's tough. I mean, I'm going to have to say this GT2 is probably my favorite car. Yeah. Um, and I've raced several cars. I was going to say, you've been in a lot of stuff. A lot of cars. I think this would be my favorite car just because of this, how raw it is, right? Yeah. It's just, it's, you know, a, a lot of the other cars I like, but they're, you know, they're just kind of like, they're kind of throttled back. Mm hmm you know this GT2 they're they're just you get like, everything they're huh? just you get have it all <laughs> yeah you know, and, and, and I know a lot of people debate that and a lot of people actually don't like that because yeah. this car is tip was really made for supposed to be for bronze drivers okay only gotcha um didn't and then, know that and then they opened it I'm a silver uh -huh. but in Pirelli World Challenge uh, and it will SRO now I'm able to fill some paperwork out because I'm less than five years and they and they give me a they gave me a bronze Pass. Got the pass. Yeah, yeah. and te technically anybody that become like James and you know is not a James is a silver. Could be maybe even a silver plat gold. Yeah, he, he if he, if they really, but he's over fifty. Yeah, so he's fifty three or fifty one uh -huh. years old. Or yeah, yeah, sorry James, he just turned fifty. So he's not, <laughs> not fifty one yet. But anyways, he he's he doesn't look it. He looks like thirty. Yeah, yeah. But it, he he's because bronze because if you're over 50 you're, you're, you can go to bronze I got gotcha. to bronze okay so that's what this is for it's made for the it's like playing on the senior tour well <laughs> <laughs> just not really not no I think it's for the guys that it's it, you know they're it's more expensive to race it's a more expensive car they're trying to make it a uh, like they're gonna have the paddock club just for the GT3 in this car. That makes well, sense. Bring your yeah. so they're bringing yeah. an experience to it. Right. Yeah. That's what they're. That's what they're doing. That's okay. what this this one is for. But, I get it. But this is actually. I wish that the all the GT4 series was all GT2s, mm -hmm. because when you roll down the uh, grid with this, the way it sounds. Just the rumble yeah. when you're people. The people love this car. They oh, want to yeah. take pictures. The whistle when it's on track. Yeah, when it's, it's on track. It's yeah, on. I mean, nothing against my GT4, but a 718. I mean, yeah. you know, it's mine look good because you put the chrome on it. But I mean, yeah. you know what I mean. I mean, it's just, yeah, of course, it's the 718. What's well, the big dog? You know, yeah, you got right. this shows up and it's like this all is, right. So this is the you biggest, show up with the nuclear right. bomb and it's like all right. This everybody is the big, out of the way. If you could win, the, I could win the GT4 race, and then come through the paddock and then if somebody could drive up with this and everybody would just go over there exactly and, look at this, and they're like who cares about that guy exactly. <laughs> exactly. they want to see the car yeah. that's what a lot of fans want to hear and see exactly and so i think this would be my favorite car not because just that but just driving it is great and you know doing 200 miles an hour i mean yeah you know why who that's can not like, a bad who, who like that yeah this is a great question this uh, favorite track though he asked oh yeah yeah favorite track Mid Ohio is my favorite track. Unfortunately, we don't get to go there. We went there my three years ago in Pirelli World Challenge, and I almost won. I won there like three times in the open wheel car. For some reason, that is one of my favorite tracks. Yeah. It's dangerous, scary, it's technical, and it's hard. Uh -huh. And I do good there. But I love that track. <laughs> and I do good there. Uh, yeah, I, I just one of those tracks that no matter. Just feel real comfortable when you're yeah, there. Yeah, no matter what I go there in, uh -huh. I do well. Nice. And I, so that's my favorite track, Mid Ohio. Yeah, it's interesting how, like, certain racers, it doesn't, you know, there's not really a rhyme or reason why. Like, they just kind of, certain tracks they get, like, really dialed in for. Yeah, and they're I don't just know. like, just I'm one of those I things. see this track well, I'm good. I know? went there and I went there with the sim 
in 2017 and in, in like the first practice i was p1 yeah and i and i and i don't even feel like i was driving but i just knew there's there's certain things and i've learned it in a couple other tracks there's like two or three little things that are real small mm-hmm. that make a huge difference yeah that it, if people don't get it or see it or know to do it yeah then that's then that's the advantage there's yeah. the huge advantage and that's really all it is it's yeah. just and we're talking like you can't even measure some of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you figure yeah, like, what a half of it. If you I, think a, you know, a lot of it's apex and speed, right? Well, a lot of like people this will one, like see the time to... sheets and somebody's a half a second off. But if you yeah. think of what a half a second is, oh yeah, you know you can bear you blink twice yeah. and, exactly. and a guy comes by. So it's really not that far. But yeah. that's how that's how small the yeah. differences are. And that's the thing is a lot of this race, a lot of that racing is, you know, it's some of them it's milliseconds. It is. You know when if you're if you're taking milliseconds off yeah. on your apex. Yep. Well, that adds up, it especially does. over after. especially a twenty track, yeah. twenty yeah. turn track. You know, if you're if you're just a little bit off getting back to the exactly. gas, then you're a second yeah. off when you come by. Think the line. about that running that for ninety minutes. Okay, well then now you're in the back of the field. Yeah, like that. Right, and and that's what's good about racing in this series. Like I said before, too. There, I mean, the, the guys that we're racing against. I mean, Michael Cooper, all that. I mean, these guys are good, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's you 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 just got to keep. You want to beat them. Yeah. You know, so that would be my that was my favorite track. I just want to do throw one last question okay. before we wrap. Um, why did you make the leap from Audi to Porsche? That was the last question. Yeah, that was good that we got in. You know, I, I they're both great cars. I love German cars, obviously. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, I just like the way they're built. I love. I, I still love the Audi, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I know Audi, the Audi Motorsports people. And I'm still good friends with a couple of them. Yeah, uh, a couple of them were mad at me. You know, obviously because yeah. it was kind of a, it was kind of a last minute thing. You know, I think, I think what happened there was, you know, we were racing. Uh, I think we were racing when the wheel fell off mm-hmm. on that thing. It wasn't because of the wheel fell off. That wasn't Audi's fault. But we were gonna go. We we're going into the next season. And uh, Porsche was just coming out with the GT4. They just changed it. Okay. They already had the the previous came in. But gotcha. It was exactly. It was. There's two of them. And they just they were ugly. And yeah, exactly. They were, yeah. Now so the, like this slow, was probably what 16 ish. Yeah, when yeah. That happened yeah. when they yeah. came out with that. Yeah. So so the they came over that. and they they said you know hey you know they they Porsche Motorsports kind of came over and was talking about it and uh, you know obviously if I switch over I get a deal of this I had someone that actually wanted to buy the R8. Okay. Um, and he has it now uh-huh. and he I'm, and he's gonna race. And he uh, he works for Amazon. He's one of their VP guys. Nice. So he's that's cool. He, uh, yeah. So he's listed. He's gonna listen to this. I'm gonna. He he likes it. Yeah. So he's got that car now, and I still love that car. Yeah. I mean, I love driving the Audi. It's mm-hmm. Just two different machines. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, the, so it's more of opportunity. At it was the more time. of opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Nothing against the Audi. I mean, uh, but you got to realize that. The, it was also me thinking that we're gonna have an advantage going to the new Porsche, and that you know. Yeah. The Audi kind of was getting pinned. Yeah, there they, they got the people that have to go in there and fight for the BOP stuff. Yeah, and the Audi seemed so to you me, could pretty see that on the wall. And yeah, you're yeah. Just like, and uh, it looked to me. And what was happening with Audi is we were getting hammered. Like, uh huh. Ride height was getting higher. Yeah. Raise the rear. Raise the front. Uh, here's a bigger restrictor. So at you know I'm sitting here and so you're just getting marked yeah, off. Yeah. 2019 at at St. Pete, uh-huh. my, my home race. The year before that, I, I almost win. Yeah. Right in the Audi, I finished third third overall. Yeah. I won the Am race. You know, it's yeah, my yeah. home race. I got a hundred something people there. I come back in 2019. I'm like super excited. Yeah. I have this big setup. You're I like, got I got people this. There, it's over. And they 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 give us a ride height increase and a and a and two millimeter bigger restrictor. So they handicap your car. And I'm yeah. sitting here driving in 15th. Yeah. And there's nothing I could do about it. Exactly. Like literally, we were. It was super slow. That sucks. And, that... and I was like, you know, I was like, you know what? That's, That's why part... I switched mid year. Yeah. I was like, I'm done. Yeah. You know, because their guys aren't fighting for this stuff. So, yeah. you know, and, and then I switched over. So yeah. that's why I switched over. And I, that's a, like the, right before we close, we've talked about it, Aaron and I, before, like even on the EMSA guys, they're the same thing. You know, they're getting hammered pre race too, and they have to go in and they have to lobby for the car where yeah. they're like, look, you know, they're like trying to take power out of the car. They're trying to take this, and then they'll go juice up the 488, you know, yep. and turn up the boost on that and car. That's and then the they turn the responsibility like, of their head guy exactly. for the motorsports like, team of Porsche or Audi exactly. to do that. And the Porsche's guy is just better right now. Yeah. And that's great, you know, yeah. like that to share that. Thank you for yes. sharing that because there is that. There's a lot of behind the scenes dynamics that a lot of fans and people don't yeah. see. 
when yeah, they go into that one because it's not like, oh, you just go take the car there. No, after it passes tech, okay, then they're going to handicap your car. If they're yeah. like, you run t- too fast. There's a lot of strategy. They're the like, the teams will right, come, the Porsche you're will come running over. balls out. Time to dial you back. Well, Porsche will come over and tell you where you're going to run yeah. at practice, so they don't get, so we don't get any BOP. Exactly. Because in the BOP, but it's strategy. It's oh, smart. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's, there's a like lot a, of that going on. Yeah. You don't want to go out there and put a 30 second qualifying time and down in front of the entire field no, and no, be no. like, "All right, you're going to be in the back of the field that's, right when we start." That's, ha- that's happened. It's yeah. happened where you know a guy goes out, you bring in a good shoe and. He goes out there and he's trying to make it. Well, he's trying to make a name so he yeah. can get a ride somewhere. And yeah. he throes down like a but two it, second a lap faster think, lap time. And then all of a sudden we get BOP. They raise the rear and everybody get. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know, and, and it's that, like and everybody's back. And it's yeah. like, dude. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm <laughs> sure. It. And I'm sure everybody like you guys are in tune with that. So everybody at the track, I can imagine the banter that goes on with the, oh, yeah. the, the teams and the they're like this guy yeah. out here screwing everything oh, up. That's a, listen, I've seen that. I see it all the time. Yeah, I see it all the time. You're right about that. That does happen. <laughs> a lot, a lot, and you get mad at them, right? Yeah. Because it, you you can't you it's can like o- you can't overcome mechanical disadvantages. Of course not. You know when the car is it, the car is designed to run at this ride height, and, mm-hmm. and the, they raise it to make you slow down. Of course, right? Yeah, they turn and, you into and, a wind sail, and, right. and then you're like, "What am I going to do exactly. now?" Exactly. I might as well be out here in a Honda Civic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. All cool. right. Well, Aaron, you have anything else for Jason uh-huh. before we cut him loose? Uh-huh. Hey, Jason, thank you so hey, much hey, for man. spending time with us. Honored to have you on the show. Good yeah. luck with this season coming up. Yep. I know you got a treacherous run, and uh, we're going to be watching and wish it, wishing you the best. Yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah. Appreciate it. Absolutely. We'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of PCAR Talk. Connect with us on Instagram at PCAR Talk or online at PCARTalk.com.